Welcome back to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, this time around, we're going to look at a Brocade proprietary protocol called Metro Ring Protocol, or MRP. And so what MRP does is it is a um, layer two loop avoidance mechanism, like spanning tree, like rapid spanning tree. Um, but in, in lieu of running spanning tree, it is for when you're running a ring topology. So this is primarily used by service providers. Um, and it was developed before there was a standardized ring protocol and before there was um, MPLS. But uh, at the time, there was only sonnet rings. And sonnet rings or ATM rings were very, very expensive per interface. So we designed Metro Ring Protocol that could run over anything. So you know, 10 megabit, 100 megabit, gigabit, 40 gigabit, 100 gigabit, it doesn't really matter. So it's a very, very simple and fast protocol, much faster to fail over than, than spanning tree or even rapid spanning tree. Um, very, very simple to configure and, um, you know, and, and very effective if you cannot or will not run spanning tree or your devices are not capable of running, um, you know, MPLS or, or some sort of traffic engineering. So, um, so again, it, it is a replacement for your other standardized layer two loop avoidance mechanisms like spanning tree or, or 802.1w rapid spanning tree uh, or 802.1s, something like that. So how do we configure it? So what we're going to build is, um, sorry, let me go back to that, that diagram here. So what we're going to build is we have three routers connected in a ring, right? Um, so these are 10 gig interfaces, one slash two slash one will be my primary interface. Um, it's going to go through a few members and back to one slash two slash three. So the way this protocol works is you designate one device as the master and it sends out a packet called an RHP or a ring health packet out its primary port and it listens for it on its secondary port. If it hears its own packet come back, it knows that the, that the ring is complete and therefore it blocks that traffic on that secondary port. If it's, uh, so it sends those RHPs 10 times a second. So this is a very fast uh, protocol to fail over. Um, and so if it stops hearing its own packets come back, it puts this into forwarding and this into forwarding because there's a break in the ring somewhere else. A device has failed, a link has failed, somewhere there's a break in that ring, so the loop is not complete and therefore it doesn't need to continue to block on that secondary port. Um, you also don't need a secondary master because if the master switch fails, then the ring is broken anyway. So there's really no need to have an election process and you know figure out who's going to be the standby master. Then none of that is required. Um, you can also have overlapping rings. That's perfectly okay. Um, uh, so yeah, so it's it's a flexible protocol, but very easy to configure. Okay, so. We will drop over. So this is supported on, uh, well, every device we build, right? So 7250, 7450, 7750, um, you know, uh, the MLX, the Super X, pretty much all of the, the, the campus fast iron, net iron line. Uh, it is not supported on the VDX series. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's primarily a um, service provider and, and campus kind of feature. So... Um, let's go into config T. Uh, so this is router one. So this is going to be our master, right? So we'll configure it on a per VLAN basis. So we'll go to VLAN 10. Uh, we're going to tag those interfaces one slash two slash one E one slash two slash three. So we'll add our two interfaces there. Um, then we're going to create a Metro ring. So Metro dash ring and we'll give it a number. Um, and in this case, we're going to say it's master. So um, this is the only one we're going to designate as master. All the others don't need a, a, a master designation. And then we need our ring interfaces. So ring dash interface, uh, E1 slash 2 slash 1, and E1 slash 2 slash 3. So on the master, the order of these is important, right? So this is going to be my primary port. This is my secondary port. On the non-masters, it it doesn't matter. It's totally irrelevant which ones the which ones comes first and second. But on the master, it's very important because I can have a co counter rotating ring. So let's say I have VLAN 20 and I want it to block. I want one slash two slash three to be my primary port and to block on one two one. Then um, then I would put those in reverse so that it would utilize all of the fiber or copper or whatever the case is. Um, so lastly, I just need to enable that. So now if I do a show metro or show metro ring, I have one ring configured, 
right? So this is ring one. Uh, the ring ID is one. Its state is enabled. I'm the master. The master VLAN is 10. There could be a topology group. So by all means, you could have 100 or 1,000 VLANs following this master VLAN if you were running a topology group. Um, here's my hello time and my pre-forwarding time. So the failover is 300 milliseconds. So it, it sends out a hello every 100 milliseconds, so 10 times a second, uh, and it will uh, fail over in, in, um, in uh, 300 milliseconds. So here, here's my primary ring interface, one slash two slash one. It's in a forwarding state. Um, and one slash two slash three is uh, my secondary interface and it's also forwarding. So why are those both forwarding? Because the rest of my ring's not complete. So once my ring gets completed, then we'll see that, uh, that state change. Also, I've sent 41 RHPs, but I haven't received any again because the ring is not complete. Um, and these are topology change, um, um, BPDUs, and four state changes. So let's configure a second counter-rotating ring. So let me have a look at what I've done already. And then, uh, so, so I'm going to create VLAN 20 here. And I'm going to use the same interface. So tag E1 slash 2 slash 1, E1 slash 2 slash 3. Okay. I'm going to create metro dash ring 2. I'm also going to make it the master. So each ring can have a totally different master, right? There can be, you know, eight devices, 10 devices in a ring, and they can eat, each ring can have a different master. They could be overlapping or not. Uh, totally up to you. So each ring is completely independent of the other rings, even though they may be sharing the same interfaces. So it's on a per VLAN basis um, or topology group basis, if that's how you want to do it. So in this case, uh, we're going to do ring dash interface. And we're going to reverse that order. So 1 slash 2 slash 3 is going to be my primary. And E1 slash 2 slash 1 is going to be my secondary. Oh, excuse me. I forgot the E there. So this is my primary port. So this one will be the block port for this ring if everything works properly. And then we're going to enable that ring. Okay, so that's it for that, right? So there's my... There's my master node done. The other nodes are going to look exactly the same as this, except they're, they won't have the word master in them. So I'm just going to move my console over to these other guys. Uh, config T, VLAN 10, tag E121, E123, Metro ring 1. And that ring number has to match, of course. Uh, ring dash interface and as i said the order that those interfaces go in for a non-master totally doesn't it doesn't matter so it makes no difference what you put those in and then we'll enable that okay and then uh vlan 20 uh tag e121 e12 um Metro ring two, ring dash interface E one two one E one two three, and enable that. Okay, so there's. Let's have a look at that. Make sure we're good. So the only difference that you'll see here is that at first it didn't matter what order I put the ring interfaces in, and second there was no master command in there. But otherwise the command is exactly the same as the previous switch. And then uh, lastly, I am going to copy that and we'll move over to router three. Going to config T and I should be able to just paste that configuration in exactly as it came out of uh, number two. Okay, and so lastly, if I go back to router one and do a show metro, I, aha, so here's ring one, right? Here's my primary interface. It's sending those RHPs out one, two, one, and it's listening for them on one, two, three. So my primary interface, my secondary interface, you'll see that my primary interface is now forwarding and the secondary interface is blocking. So so this is um, this is a completed ring, right? So the packets are getting all the way around. I'm receiving my own packets, and so I'm blocking them. Um, 
The same thing happens on our on on Metro Ring 2, but you'll see that the interfaces are reversed. So we're actually blocking 121 here and we're blocking 123 here. So I'm utilizing all parts of the fiber now, right? So it's not like um, like a single spanning tree where I'm where I'm not util uh, not utilizing all my fiber. Um, you can also see RHP sent and RHP received. Um, so those are not going to be equal because I sent a whole bunch before I had that ring completed. But you could clear those stats and, and see that uh, see that change. Uh, and in the log here, we're going to see um, we're going to see those ports go in forwarding, blocking, pre-forwarding, blocking. Um, so this this port goes into forwarding, uh, and then we're going to go blocking and pre-forwarding, blocking here. So so you'll see those you'll see those rings fail over for the two for the two VLANs as it comes up. Um, you can also turn on diagnostics if you want. So under the under the Metro ring configuration, if we went VLAN 10, um, Metro dash ring one, we can turn on diagnostics. So you just turn on diagnostic and then you can do a show Metro dash ring and uh, ring ID and diagnostics. And then you can see um, the, the time in microseconds that it's taking to get around that. So on ring one, I've enabled diagnostics and you can see the average in microseconds that it's taking to get around that ring. So um, on average, and it'll give you the recommended hello time. So, so if the ring is big enough, it may recommend that you change the hello time and the pre-forwarding time depending on what it's getting in the average RHP time. So, um, so it may recommend you to change that to a different uh, to a different uh, hello time and pre-forwarding time if that um, if your ring time is is higher than than it should be. Okay. Uh, oh, and it also shows you uh, how many diagnostic frames were sent and how many were lost in the process. So that's a, that's an optional parameter to turn on diagnostics, but but a good one. Okay, so easy as that. Obviously, you can do you know many other things, overlapping rings and things like that. But that's the very basics and and uh, what you would do in in almost all cases. All right. So hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks very much. Take care.